In today's video, we'll discuss the relationship between sleep and telomere lengths. Shorter telomeres are associated with cell aging, so it's definitely an important topic to discuss. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So this is again going to be an entry in our series surrounding whether polyphasic sleeping is dangerous and I'm bringing the whole cavalry for this video. I want to show that my position is unbiased and because of that I'm bringing views from both sides of the argument. Anyways, so what I've done is I've looked at 10 different articles surrounding sleep and telomere lengths and some of those are going to assess sleep durations and telomere lengths, others are going to compare sleep quality, uh, some are going to compare sleep apnea and insomnia symptoms. So several different perspectives at play. So what are telomeres? Well, I already stated that telomeres are associated with cell aging and they are essentially uh, sticks at the end of your chromosomes that act as marks for how many times your cells are able to divide. Once the telomere is used up, that's it. No more cell division. Let's start by looking at a few hard hitters, okay? This study showed that children who sleep less have shorter telomeres. And that's a pretty bad sign. See, these things are usually monitored in adults only because the effects are going to be more visible there. So the fact that changes are already present in children is a pretty bad sign. Although there was only a difference of less than 1% of the whole telomere length. So it's not that chaotic. Also, towards the end, I'm going to present an alternative hypothesis for why the telomere lengths are the way they are, so stay tuned. The next paper I want to look at is this one. Here, the subjects were of varying age, but all of them suffered from HIV. Uh, here, people who slept less than 7 hours a day had 9% shorter telomeres than people who slept at least 7 hours during the day. Though, I'm not sure if the effects were mostly visible in older people or in younger adults. Regardless, this next study actually showed a different view. In this study, the telomere lengths of women were compared to their sleep quality. And what's interesting here is that the sleep duration didn't affect the telomere lengths significantly, but the sleep quality did. So according to this study, if you suffer from a bad sleep quality, your telomeres will be affected while they won't be if you sleep for shorter durations. The next study we'll look at is this one. Here the results are even more interesting. In this paper, both middle-aged and older adults' sleep patterns were evaluated. And the results were that middle-aged people didn't suffer from any significantly shorter telomere lengths regardless of their sleep durations. But the older adults did. Hmm, interesting. Speaking of old ages, this paper found that people who suffered from insomnia also had shorter telomeres than people who didn't. But only when they were older than 70, okay? That's also interesting. Speaking of this paper, uh, also found that insomnia was associated with shorter telomeres, but that's not all. This paper also found that people who slept for long durations had significantly shorter telomeres. <laughs> That's crazy! So now everybody and their grandma has shorter telomeres. Anyways, there are still four studies left. Next we look at how sleep apnea is related to telomere lengths. For those of you who don't know, sleep apnea is caused by an obstruction in the throat which causes people who have breathing issues to get awake or be awoken from their sleep. And as a result of this, they will subconsciously you know, wake up and have worse sleep quality. We have this paper which found that there's a correlation between sleep apnea and shorter telomere lengths. Then we have this paper, which found no correlation between sleep apnea and telomere lengths. <laughs> what? 
I mean, damn. When I took on this task, I was sure that I'd find some strange results, but <laughs> I didn't expect this. Anyways, this study found a correlation between decreased sleep quality and shorter telomeres, but they didn't find any correlations between sleep durations and telomere lengths. And finally, I want to show this article, which found a relation between shorter sleep durations and shorter telomeres. But the interesting thing is how much shorter they were. The study group consisted of only older people, okay, and those who slept five hours a night had only 6% shorter telomeres than people who slept at least seven hours a night. So what does this all mean? Basically, that sleep seems to be linked with telomere lengths. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough subject, okay. We have several studies that linked shorter sleep durations to shorter telomere lengths, but we also had several studies that didn't find a correlation. Oh, by the way, I want to point out that in these studies the subjects were monophasic. So we can't really draw, you know, exclusive correlations between monophasic and polyphasic sleep, because as we talked about in previous videos, polyphasic sleep has a different architecture than monophasic sleep. You know, after an adaptation is completed, the light sleep amounts are decreased, while the vital sleep amounts are the same as when you're monophasic, if you've adapted to a polyphasic schedule. Anyways, what does this all mean for polyphasic sleepers? Okay, the gist of it is of course that we need to look at the data here and conclude that the safest option possible is not to reduce your total sleep time when you're sleeping polyphasically. But things are never that simple, are they? See, a polyphasic sleeper has a much better sleep quality than monophasic sleepers. So in that regard, as we showed several articles that linked poorer uh, sleep quality to shorter telomeres, polyphasic sleeping would be more beneficial, <laughs> right? Okay, okay, let's step back and chill a bit here. I mentioned earlier in this video that I had a hypothesis of my own. Okay, I think the main thing affecting people here is stress. For example, this paper found that people who meditate had longer telomeres than the people who didn't, okay? And meditation is a known way to decrease people's stress levels. Seems reasonable to me. People who sleep less might do it because they have so much to do during the day. If that's the case, polyphasic sleep would certainly be a benefit. Many people who sleep polyphasically use the gained time to actually spend more time on self-care, and like Ali, who I interviewed in this video, linked in the description. Also, while on the topic, the relation between stress and telomere lengths has been directly investigated, like in this paper, which showed that yes, if you are more stressed, your telomere lengths will be shorter. But you don't need to worry about it too much. Scientists are working hard to find a way to actually increase telomere lengths, and a few decades in the future this might not be an issue at all for anyone regardless of their habits. For now, I suggest that you sleep polyphasically and you put a few hours during the day on self-care. Use the time you gain to spend more time on yourself in addition to working harder and more. As you saw in our 2020 goals video, I talked about how this year should be a year where you should focus on health amongst other things. Be sure to set out a few hours during the day to meditate, supplement the time that you gain by meditating so that your stress levels are also decreased. Okay, I want to make sure that you don't jeopardize your health, so, you know, try to decrease your stress levels, okay? Anyways, that's all for today. Have a good day and remember to have pleasant naps, people!